Hey, Shabbat Shalom, YouTube tribe. This is Brother Richard from Ozarks Altruistic with the second part of the Torah portion by the name of Shalach or Shalach. And this is my fourth time to try to do this um, based on uh, several blurbs, okay? <laughs> so let's see if we can get through this. Uh, turn to the book or the, the scroll. It's a book now for us anyway of Joshua or Yahushua uh, chapter 2. We're going to go verses 1 through 24, if I can get that far. The four-minute mark is generally where I've uh, flubbed up quite a bit. So let's see if we can do this. And Yahushua, son of Nun, secretly sent out two men from Shittim to spy, saying, Go, see the land of Jericho. And they went and came to the house of a woman, a whore. And her name was Rahab, and they lay down there. But it was reported to the sovereign of Jericho, saying, See, men from the children of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. And the sovereign of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men whom have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. But the woman had taken the two men and hid them. So she said, The men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. Then it came to be, as the gate was being shut, when it was dark, that the men went out. I do not know where they went. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly, so that you overtake them. So basically, she sent them on a wild goose chase. And that's like another cliche, right? And I generally don't like cliches, but I'll probably get to experience what a goose chase is like, because Sister Nicole will certainly have gooses, geese, gooses. We'll certainly have geese before it's all over with. I'm not even going to make it to the four-minute mark on this. That was the two-minute mark. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep on going regardless. We're going to get a good laugh. Bloopers are going to be included in this one. <laughs> okay, but she had brought them up to the roof and hidden them with the stalks of flax when she had the, with the, she, which she had laid out on the roof. And the men pursued them by the way of the Arden, or the Jordan, the Jordan River, to the fords. And they shut the gate afterwards as soon as the pursuers had gone out. The gates were shut behind them. And before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof. And she said to them, I know, I know that Yahuwah has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of you. They melt away because of the renown of Yahuwah our Elohim, because of his reputation of what he does for us, right? For we have heard how Yahuwah dried up the water of the Sea of Reeds, the Red Sea is something that it's called, uh, for you when you came out of Mitzrayim, and what you did to the two sovereigns of the Amorites who were beyond the Yarden, Sihon and Og, whom you put under the ban. Sihon and Og were giants. They were mixed with the blood of the fallen angels, um, Nephilim. What you do, if you want to read about this, you go to Genesis or Bereshith, uh, chapter 5 and 6, I believe you'll get that information. Hey, I finally remembered a reference. Mark that down. Okay, so, and here she goes again. And we, and when we heard, our hearts melted, and there was no spirit in anyone because of you. For Yahuwah your Elohim, he is Elohim in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. That right there, look up the second commandment, you will see the reference. And now, please swear to me by Yahuwah, since I have shown you kindness, that you also show kindness to my father's house, and shall give me a true token, and shall spare my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters, and all that they have, and shall deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, Our lives for your lives. In other words, this is a righteous thing. If you do not expose this matter of ours, then it shall be, when Yahuwah has given us the land, that we shall treat you in kindness and truth, based on the Torah, because the Torah is truth. So she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the city wall, and she dwelt on the wall. And she said to them, Go to the mountain, lest the pursuers come upon you, and you shall hide three days until the pursuers have returned, and afterwards go on your way. 
And the men said to her, we are released from this oath of yours, which you have made us swear. Unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, your mother, and your brothers, and all your father's household to your home. So they have to put a, uh, a banner of red out the window, an opening to her house. And everyone has to be inside of this house at this time when the children of Israel come back to strike this city. Does that sound familiar? It's uh, likened to the first Passover story. And it shall be that anyone who goes outside the doors of your house into the street, his blood is on his own head and we are innocent. And anyone who is with you in the house, his blood is on our head Head if, if a hand is laid on him. So here's the thing. They are going to come in and melee this place. And so um, just on a basic understanding of this, do not go outside, okay? Because there's going to be great destruction just as there was back in the first Passover, just as there will be again, okay? And if you expose this matter of ours, then we shall be released from our oath. I've said that already. Okay, we talked about the scarlet. I try to repeat things a couple of times. Um, so they left and came to the mountain and stayed there three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers sought them in all the way, but did not find them. Then the two men returned and came down from the mountain and passed over. And they came to Yahushua, son of Nun, and related to him all that had been befallen them. And they said to Yahushua, truly, Yahuwah has given all the land into our hands. And also all the inhabitants of the land have melted away because of us, because of Yahuwah. So that's the end of that right there. But I will say this much. So this is another another instance because uh, the, 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 the scriptures are cyclical. The Father over and over and over again delivers our enemies into our hands. Well, what happens in order for him to do that? We have to trust him. We have to, have to be faithful uh, sons and daughters to him so that he acts in our life because, you know, since and not if, sin is what separates us from him then obedience is what draws us near and connects us to him. And our trust in uh, obedience, right? Trust in obedience, because you don't obey anything or anyone unless you trust in that, that program or the words that comes out of their mouth, okay? So my point is, is we trust the Father in all the words that come out of his mouth. And so we connect ourselves to him. We cleave to him, Debakuf, Debakuf okay? And uh, we cleave to him for dear life. Okay, and so we keep his commandments to the best of our ability, which keeps us close to him, like this, close to him, okay, because sin separates us from him, okay? So what he does is he gives our enemies over into our hands, and he's done that throughout all of our generations forever, and will continue to do that uh, even into the battle right before the millennial kingdom happens, okay? So this happened, uh, you know, back at the first uh, Passover, you know, when the children of Israel came out and, um, you know, the example earlier was Caleb or Caleb and Yahushua, son of Nun, and uh, the other 10 leaders of the tribes, they didn't trust. So they were put to death, okay, because they came back and gave what we call a false report. And a false report, not, it wasn't a lie about giants being in the land because they were, certainly were. The false report is their, their nasty uh, distrust of the father, okay? you know, faithlessness, torlessness, wickedness, disobedience, okay? Um, basically, they were rebellious, okay? Where you had Yahushua and Caleb. Caleb was like, let's go, let's do this because he knows the father fights in our stead. We know this, okay? So those are the people the father wants. He wants the people that are zealous, okay? And those are the people he protects, okay? The people who are not zealous, the people who wither away, the people who are fair weather friends, the people who uh, will not keep the Torah, that are just kind of hanging along, you know, straggling along with the people, um, the Father weeds us out as time goes by. And at this point, if you're in the, the range of, of my voice, you may well not have been weeded out yet. 
But since it's not once saved, always saved, it is a continual process. I would say to you right now that clean out your clay pot, buddy. Richard, brother Richard, clean out your clay pot, okay? Pour in the clean water, wash it out inside, dump it out, it's dirty. Pour in the clean water, you know, you know what I'm saying? Wash, rinse, repeat. Do something about yourself right now because I know something for sure that we cannot do anything about anyone else but ourselves first. And then as an example, uh, other people will follow along and do the right things, okay? These spies, these false witnesses, these faithless men, they came and spread a disease in the camp of lies and faithlessness, okay? Um, that kind of activity will destroy your people. It will destroy everyone around you, and it will certainly destroy you. So, I would encourage you, uh, like I just said, to do something about yourself. And you can pray for faith, for the increase of your faith and trust. But what's going to happen? How does that increase? You stay in the Word, line by line, verse by verse. As a, an older gentleman that I used to listen to would say, line by line, verse by verse. And I know that's also a scripture. And so um, that is what keeps us close, is obedience and love and trust and faith. Sin is disobedience, it's distrust, okay? It's a lack of love, it's rebellion. And eventually, it gets you all the way to the cold end. And that's it. Faith and trust is always zealous, okay? Always zealousness. Work on that. I'm working on that as we speak. This is the second example of the Father delivering our enemies over into our hands based on people's trust, okay? Based on their trust and what they do with that trust. So, I will put up the third part of the Torah portion here shortly. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that you know that I'm talking to myself as well as I'm talking to every single one of you. And I hope that you apply these, uh, these scriptures in your life, okay? All right, Shabbat Shalom. I'll get back with you soon.